such an honor today meeting with uh, the great Mr. Harold Burson, the founder of Burson uh, Marshmallow Public Relations. And I, this is just a thrill for me to actually be sitting here in his office. And Mr. Burson was just telling me that he's uh, in the process of writing a book. And I thought it was quite interesting how he's organizing the book by the different uh, decision points or inflection points in his life. So tell us a little bit about that, Mr. Burson. Uh, I have long believed that people above a certain economic socio status have opportunities come to them in their lives which could, if they handle them properly and if they recognize them as opportunities, uh, what could be a defining moment in that person's life. And a defining moment is an event in your life that changes your life materially and usually for the better. And my contention is that there are many people who have those opportunities, but they don't recognize that that opportunity is there, or having recognized it, they really don't respond to it as well as they should, and they are left sta sta stagnant where they were before. And what I'm trying to do in my book is to uh, tell people that they should be aware of these opportunities that come to them in their lifetimes. And I'm doing it by citing about eight or ten what I call defining moments in my life where one day after the other, my life has just changed materially. Wow, wow. And uh, so the book, you said, is not just going to be about you and your life, but really about the history of public relations. Well, it's going to be, it's going to be about my life. It's built in, around my life. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I am speaking a lot about the history of public relations. I certainly want to dispel the myth that public relations is something new. Uh, my belief is that public relations began as a process uh, when people started communicating with one another, even before we had the alphabet. Uh, and public relations basically, uh, in its simplest terms, is persuasion. And people have been trying to persuade one another ever since two people got together. <laughs> That's very true. And the other thing that we were beginning to talk about, Mr. Burson, was um, I mentioned that I had the great fortune in my life to um, have studied under Peter Drucker. And uh, the thing that I admired about him the most was his ability to take complex situations and just distill it to his essence. And really, that's what you're famous for, too, for walking into crises and chaos. So what's your process? I mean, what, what's made you so good at that, walking into something that just seems uh, unmanageable and then bringing calm to the situation? What, what's your process? My process is really one of elimination. Uh, when I go get into a situation uh, that's a negative situation, uh, I always think in terms of what is the worst case scenario. What is the worst result that could happen if this event is not handled properly. And so when you start at the very worst thing, any progress that you've made that's better really is progress. Mm -hmm. And it gives you uh, hope and feeling that uh, you can do something about it. And it builds and it builds and it builds. So basically, uh, I try to think of uh, preventing the thing from happening its worst, and then having stabilized the situation, then go, go to work to try to, to build it back up again. 
it's a two or three stage process. It's not, and it takes time. One of the things that uh, we talk a lot about on my blog and wonder a lot about is, is many people talk about uh, the new media, social media, and the revolutionary ways that people are able to communicate and connect. And some people say, well, this changes everything. Uh, the new media and Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube and all the ways people are communicating, has this changed everything or are some things still the same in, in the world of public relations? Social media is part of a continuum that started really with the printing press, with movable type. Uh, back in the 1870s, uh, there was a great social medium that came into the world, and it's called a telephone. And the telephone enabled people to do something that they had never been able to do, and that is to talk to people at a distance uh, over a telephone line. Uh, if you go back and look at the newspapers of those days, uh, one of the first things that was going to happen is that the railroads were going to go out of business passage of power of the railroad. And the reason for that is why would people want to take the trouble to go see one another when they could talk with one another over the telephone? Well, of course, that didn't happen. Uh, but uh, but the, the, the phone is, it is, and it still is, a, a social medium. The, the situation with social medium from a digital standpoint as we know it today, it has various qualities that were not available in these previous social media. Uh, for example, uh, you can literally talk to thousands if not millions of people and the cost is infinitesimal. You can reach vast audiences at practically no cost. Uh, and therefore you can galvanize uh, opinion, you can incite people to do bad, you can incite people to do good. Uh, actually, social media uh, itself is not good or bad, it's neutral. It's a utility, it's a device. Uh, it's what people, the content is really what is important about it. And, and one of the things that I think the world has got to be considering is some kind of control over content that goes over. Interesting. So, uh, you know, I guess um, you know, that's very, a very timely point because we just went through this whole issue where uh, the government was trying to pass regulation around the protection of copyrights and so forth, the SOPA bill, and um, and I think that's um, that's wh wh where we'll have to go. I think eventually, that's what really our economy is, is built on is, is being able to protect intellectual property. Well, one of the things that would be so wonderful to, um, to tap into your experience and wisdom and, and, and if you could talk to, uh, I have a lot of young people that read my blog, many college students and even high school students, and uh, what, would you, uh, what kind of wisdom or advice would you give uh, a young person entering public relations today? Well, I talk with college audiences four or five times a year, and uh, the first piece of advice that I give each of those audiences is that the most important thing that they can be doing with this part of our lives is to start building a network. And building a network is a lot more than knowing people. You've got to really interact with those people. You've got to have relationships with those people. And then you find that when you need help or you, or, or, or you are in trouble or something like that or even looking for a job, uh, the people that you have really been close to are the ones who are going to help you the most. So I think that uh, building a network is the most important thing that young person can do. Uh, I think that on almost any college
college campus. And as a future governor of that state, uh, there are several judges who are going to be in positions of power. There are several people who will be CEOs of companies. Uh, the trick is in identifying the ones who are really worth being on your network and then working very hard to build a relationship with them. That has paid off greatly for me throughout my lifetime. Well, that's really uh, something that uh, uh, is a foundational truth, isn't it? Because whether it's online relationships or offline relationships, it all gets down to uh, building those, not just relationships, but, but friendships that you can call on throughout your life. Of course, you know, it's all generational with me, offline. I know it works. Mm -hmm. Online, I suspect it works too, um, but probably one step remote. Mm -hmm. Although online, of course, you can be exposed to many, many more people, perhaps with less intensity than face to face. But I think I, I would take my chances on, on doing it any way that I can and, and getting to know people and having them know me know what I can do and know what I stand for. Well, uh, thanks so much for your time today. And tell us, um, uh, everybody that sees this is going to want to buy your book. So tell us a little about when you think it might be available. You're, you said you're what, maybe uh, uh, two-thirds? Two-thirds of the way through? Yeah, two-thirds of the way through. No, about 60 percent, I guess, two-thirds. Yeah. Uh, I hope to finish writing it by the end of the summer, and, and hopefully it will be published sometime during 2013. 2013, great, great. Do you have a title for it yet? Uh, we're talking about several titles. I uh, haven't got one yet. Okay. Well, we're, we can't wait to see it. Good. Thank we you. can't wait to see it. Thank you so much. Good.